we're going to start with some of the news and notes portion uh, before we actually get into a couple of the previews and make some picks because we were actually super hyped uh, about this news that dropped um, this morning. And there was some news that also dropped yesterday morning as well. So we're going to just chat a little bit about that collectively. U.S. Soccer announcing some of the final friendlies for the United States Women's National Team in 2022. Yesterday, Monday, bright and early, they announced that second fixture that's going to take place for the United States Women's National Team on their European tour uh, when they head on over to face England. They will also head on over to Spain and face the uh, Spain's Women's National Team. So we're very, very excited about that. And then this morning, uh, Tuesday morning, they announced their final friendlies of the calendar year will take place in November, November 10th and 13th. They're going to be taking place in Florida and Fort Lauderdale at DRV Pink Stadium in Harrison, New Jersey at Red Bull Arena, where they will face Germany, the 2022 Euro runners up. I was absolutely thrilled to hear this news. I thought I was I thought I was already really like excited and hyped about like, oh, wow, this is they're going to play Spain. This is going to be great for this team. They're going to go to Europe. So they're going away. They're taking a trip. It's another um you know, bonding experience is going to be another challenge for, for the team having to go against the Euro winners and then a, a really good team in Spain. And then they just absolutely blew me away with this announcement because it's basically the number one ranked and the number two ranked teams, uh, FIFA ranked teams in the world who are going to be going head to head to close out 2022. I'm so excited uh, for, for this and uh, the United States women's national team. I am so jazzed. I mean, when they announced England, I was super, super hyped. Oh, yeah. Then Spain, it was like, okay, it doesn't get any better than this. But now the fact that they're playing two matches in November against Germany, right? Number two in the world. USA is net ranked number one right now in um, <coughs> the FIFA uh, women's soccer rankings. And, and Germany and the United States are the only nations that have won multiple World Cups. So Germany, they've won it twice. Um, they're eight-time okay. European champions. Uh, but but these two sides, they haven't played in since the 2018 She Believes Cup when U.S. Oh, won. Wow. Yeah, and I don't know if you remember that game, Sandra, but it was in Ohio. U.S. ended up winning that one nothing, but the weather was just crappy. It was horrible, horrible. <laughs> was so, that the most memorable part of that for you? Was that the weather was it, terrible? <laughs> it really is when like the weather is just so bad at a match. And and at that match in Ohio, the last time USA played Germany, horrible weather. So the fact that they're playing at Drive Pink in Fort Lauderdale, huge because you know, despite it being November, you're gonna get. Like not not snow in Fort Lauderdale. Meanwhile, Harrison, New Jersey at Red Bull Arena, there could be some snow in November. I mean, we get it at that point. But um, this is such a big matchup between these two sides and, and the last friendlies that the U.S. will play before heading into a World Cup year, which is 2023. Um, but but Germany is a team that's lethal, right? They, they also... Uh, coming off of the Euros, right, where yeah. they lost to England in overtime in the final. That was 2-1. Um, Germany was without Alex Pop. She she got injured during the warm-ups. This is a team that can give the United States a run for their money. And and frankly, that's what they need. U.S. fans have been, like, yeah. complaining about yeah. – <laughs> I'm going to say complaining. Champagne problems. Yes. Complaining about the competition that the U.S. has been playing. Um, yeah. And it's, it's no knock against the competition that the United States has played in friendlies. But to go up against – European yeah. champions, England, then Spain, who's a top title contender, and then Germany, number two in the world. This is how you prepare for a World Cup. I'm here for it. Look, I'll say it's a knock. I'll say that. You could say it's now. Look, when people you know talk a little bit about some of the opposition that the United States has, has gone up against in 2022, I'm like, stop it. You're knocking. You're being disrespectful to the opposition. Uh, I loved those games against, um, you know, when they went up against Colombia. And I loved Damn. watching. I loved watching every single match during the CONCACAF W championships. And quite frankly, yeah, it is disrespectful when anybody was just like this. These these aren't serious teams. Right. Don't 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 refer to CONCACAF nations as unserious to me. I'll clown you. So. I just am like, real, but on the other side of that, like I am absolutely thrilled for these matches because that was something that was coming out throughout 2022. These complications that kind of came into play for U.S. soccer when it came to trying to, um, you know, nail down some some 
opponents for the United States women's national team during this year in the lead up to uh, in the lead up to the CONCACAF W championship specifically. Right. It was like, oh, no, it's like this team is is not being a adequately prepared uh you know these aren't suitable teams or programs to go up against um and that was just a bunch of baloney quite frankly yes. you know because they, and because they got they got some good they got some good challenges during that competition specifically yes and, uh you know they ended up coming out um uh, on top so i think maybe this 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 for me it's like a it's a good transition i think when we're looking at these 23 players uh, moving into the the end of the year, I think it's a good transition for them. This is clearly a group that Andonovsky and his coaching staff has been calling in and out of camps for quite some time. And they're looking for this next phase in the buildup to the World Cup to start having these types of challenges. And obviously when things mm -hmm. come into play, like navigating this sort of evolving <laughs> pandemic and like trying to get on the same page with other programs to schedule things, whether it's overseas or visiting teams coming to the United States. Uh, it turns out it's worked out kind of nicely. Uh, and yeah. so now they're going to close out their year, not just against one, not two, but three, three top hey. 10 were, you know, ranked teams in the world. So we're talking about, you know, England, I believe is at number four, obviously yep. Germany, number two, I believe Spain is at number eight. So the fact that you're closing out your calendar year with sort of, you know, a trio of, of top 10 world ranked talent, I think is a kind of a good, you know, uh, you know, transgressions of things for, yeah. for this team. Yes. Yeah, so USA is number one, Germany, number two, England, number four, and Spain, number eight. So it, three incredibly talented teams to close out the year. That's huge, but it's, it's almost a little bit more important that they're different teams, yeah. right? We're, the United States is going to face very different styles. I mean, even when you look at teams like Colombia and Nigeria that the U S has recently faced in, in oh, those yeah. friendlies, like incredibly How different that second match. Amazing. I mean, like uh, Nigeria put the United States under so much pressure defensively. And, and yes, I mean, there's a million different ways to do that. But when we're looking ahead to these fixtures in October and November, the, what the United States is going to see from a team like England that is reigning European champions versus a team like Spain versus a team like Germany, they're incredibly different styles of soccer, right? Spain is going to be very, very technical. They're going to try to work through the midfield. They're going to try to um, uh, be really crafty on the ball and, and move it around. Germany, they're going to look to possess, right? They're going to keep possession of it, be incredibly physical, a matchup against the United States. England might look to go a little bit more direct. They've got some really heavy hitters in that, that matchup as well. So that's something that, it, it, to me, it's not the name on the above the crest it's not the country on the jersey that matters it's the style of play and how that is going to challenge the u.s and they've been challenged in a variety of different ways and a lot of times we've talked about with these young players um if they're uh, the u.s young players are going up opposition low defensive block how do they break that down what do they do now it's a whole different page because yeah. they're going to go against teams that are just going to run and gun at them and hit really, really hard. How do they handle that? How do they handle potentially going down in a game first and having to work their way back into a game, going up and maintaining a lead? There are so many different factors in this. Um, and then, I mean, on the other side of it, yeah, I'm super excited to watch these matches. I mean, yeah. Germany, <laughs> USA, like that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, you know, sort of hearing you say like, like, like listening to you put a date on it. It, like a timestamp on it like hey this is actually the last time that they face this team and i was like wow that's quite some some time, time between 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 facing these two teams so um exciting stuff i'm sure you know uh, we're going to keep an eye on it we're obviously going to be doing coverage of it so everybody again stay tuned subscribe right for sure for sure and fans who want to see germany play they're coming to the united states go get to harrison new jersey get to right. red bull arena get to drive pink in fort lauderdale because this matchup is this is going to be a world cup matchup between germany and the united states 100 because these are the squads that obviously for the u.s we've already seen that consistency from blacko ananovsky about which players he's bringing in which lineup he's most likely going to continue to move forward yeah. with into 2023 and same goes for germany this is a, a literally world cup matches being played on american soil um in a month in like three months yeah and you want to see those players go up against those types i want to be see, there I i'm gonna get myself smith. there i'm like wait, see, for, yeah i want to see Lauderdale, harrison dice I'll get there. I'll be there. I want to see this. <laughs> I know you're closer. You should definitely. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely talk about that off mic. See how we can probably get you there. 